but the journey continues. And I can't wait to hear more about you and about the journey that you will take. To quote Dr. Seuss, the places you will go. Congratulations again. At this time, I'll turn things back to Roberto and our proud chairs and faculty who are going to toot about you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean Pantula. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm very excited to get things started. We're going to go through each of the departments. Uh, but for I would like to start off uh, for the first one uh, with the uh, Department of Mathematics. Uh, I'd like to go and introduce uh, Dr. David Maynard, uh, who will here to introduce our both our undergrad, the recipient of our Undergraduate Student of the Year honor, our Graduate Student of the Year honor, and we have a special. Uh, we have some speakers from our faculty that will also say. Uh, a few words uh, regarding our students and uh, our, uh, for our, uh, Dr. Maynard, if I can go and turn it over to you. Thank you, Roberto. Um, again, congratulations to all the uh, graduates and undergraduates we're going to hear about today. From the Department of Mathematics, uh, the outstanding undergraduate is Adrena Garrett, who will be introduced by Dr. Lynn Sko. Lynn? Okay, thank you, Dave. Um, so it is certainly my pleasure to, oops, I just lost my notes because we we're sharing the screen. Okay, one second here. <laughs> um, let's see, actually, how do I get back to my notes? New options. I'm sorry, Dr. Scott, I'll stop the okay. chair to get you. I got it, it just caught me by surprise. Okay, the, the fun with Zoom, right? Um, so again, it is my pleasure to introduce Adrena Garrett. Um, I first met you as a student in my winter 2017 analysis improved class, and this was in my very first year at CSUSD. This class is a challenging transition to upper level mathematics. And what struck me at the time was her work ethic, her commitment to fully understanding the material, and also her candor. She came to office hours one day and said she was just not getting it. Um, but it is testament to her work and her talent that she definitely did get it. She has high marks in the math major to show for it. Um, most recently, last fall and winter quarter, Adrena worked on a joint research project with myself, Dr. Ho in computer science and engineering and Dr. Aiken in mathematics. She researched algorithms to optimize camera placement for maximal coverage of a 2D region. This question touched on the capabilities of the cameras as well as how to model possible obstructions to the view of the cameras. She spent tireless hours improving a C++ program to implement one such algorithm and gave a fantastic honors talk at the end of last quarter. With the support of Dr. Hu and Dr. Aiken, Adrena received two awards in support of this project, the Edison International Foundation Scholarship and the Leonard Transportation Center Outstanding Student Award. Adrena also had the opportunity to collaborate with the CSU SB Police Department on applying her research to a real region on campus, parking lot D. So much thanks go out to Jaron Rutland and Scott Kovac and the Campus Police Department for their generous support of Adrena's project. I'd also like to mention that Adrena had the honor of being a Presidential Academic Excellence Scholar during her time at CSU SB. She juggled the demands of maintaining her excellent GPA with an impressive schedule to support her dual major in mathematics and computer science. She will be graduating in summer 2020, magna cum laude with honors in both majors, as well as honors in the university honors program. It took a lot of drive and organization to accomplish what she did. And I congratulate her for dreaming big and taking advantage of all that CSUSB has to offer. Congratulations, Adrena. Thank you so much, Dr. Scal. I'm, unfortunately, Adrena was not able to, as far as I know, I don't think she was able to join us today. But, I think uh, she's here. She's oh, here. Yeah. Oh, I just see it. My apologies. I no, love no worries. Friday surprises. Adrena, we're going to put you on the spot and uh, uh, provide an opportunity if you'd like to share a, a few brief words uh, regarding this honor. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Adrena. Um, I just want to thank Dr. Scow, Dr. Aiken, and Dr. Hu for giving me the opportunity to do research with them, along with the police department. Um, I want to thank all the faculty in the math department. They 
they encouraged us a lot and they were extremely patient and always eager to help us. So I want to thank them for that. I also want to thank my family for all of their support and also all my friends who I had um, late study nights with. So thank you all. Uh, thank you so much. Dr. Maynard, I'd like to return to you uh, to introduce both our uh, outstanding graduate uh, student of the year in, in the Department of Mathematics and also Dr. Jeffrey Meyer, who will have uh, a couple of words to say. Well, Roberto, you kind of did it for me, but our outstanding um, graduate student from the Department of Mathematics is Andrew Levin Good Ryan, who will be introduced by Professor Jeff Meyer. Uh, thank you, Dr. Maynard. Um, so it's my pleasure to be here uh, to introduce Andrew. I uh, see Andrew was actually one of the first CSUSB students I met when I came here. Uh, he was in my multivariable calculus class in the fall of 2016. And uh, it was clear to me at the time that Andrew was exceptional. Uh, he did a fantastic job in, in the course, uh, but his development from a, a scrappy young undergrad into the CNS Outstanding Mathematics graduate student, and dare I say it, a, a true mathematician in just four years has been truly remarkable. Uh, Andrew's accomplishments over the past four years are far too numerous to go over in detail in just a couple minutes, but I'll maybe say a, a few highlights. Um, Andrew has excelled in his coursework uh, at all levels of courses at the university. Uh, he became a popular tutor in the tutoring center and then a, a teacher and teaching classes. Uh, and Andrew is, has uh, dove headfirst into original research, uh, working with um, three different original research projects with three uh, different faculty members. Uh, during that time, he developed mastery of a wide range of, of mathematical disciplines from differential geometry to number theory, to group theory, to linear algebra, to graph theory. Uh, maybe I'll take a moment to outline some of these original research contributions. Uh, in the summer of 2017, Andrew started working with uh, uh, Dr. Corey Dunn. Uh, during that time, he started working on something, uh, a, a notion called constant vector curvature. Uh, there are four types of constant uh, of, of vector curvature, that type of curvature in dimension three. And at that time, very little was known. Um, usually, over the course of, a, of a, a summer, a student usually does like one type, and that's plenty of work. Uh, and uh, at least as Dr. Dunn described it. Um, however, Andrew gave a full classification of all types. And furthermore, his work um, provided some additional perspectives on future study in the area that other students have used. Um, also, uh, uh, Andrew started working on a master's thesis with uh, Dr. Corinne Johnson, who um, uh, unfortunately couldn't be here today. I was at, a, at something else, but she, I, I'm going to read some words that she prepared. Uh, so Andrew's thesis was uh, in the area of self-assembly of DNA complexes. For the last 10 years, research has focused on finding optimal design strategies that will construct a target DNA complex. However, Andrew's research looked at the inverse problem of understanding what kinds of complexes can be constructed with a given set of materials. His work is completely original. No one else has published on this problem. I can't express how much of a pleasure it was to work with Andrew on his research and to work with him as a colleague. He is truly exceptional. And I'll just add, you know, for myself, I've, I've had the great pleasure of, of working with Andrew on a research project where we've studied uh, the geometry of hyperbolic surfaces, negatively curved surfaces. And he, uh, on this research project, gave a talk this past fall at, at a, um, a sectional meeting of the American uh, Mathematical Society. Uh, so anyway, impressive stuff. And I'll just say to, in summary, Andrew, uh, we're impressed. We're proud, and we look forward to all you are going to accomplish in the years to come. Thank you so much, Dr. Meyer. I think this is a great time to have to hear from Andrew himself. Andrew, we'd love to have you give an opportunity to, uh, to, to address the group here for us. 
Uh, well, thank you, uh, Dr. Meyer and everyone else for having me. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of my family here. Um, and so I'd like to thank all of them first and foremost, because they've been very supportive through my decade long journey, actually, to get my master's. Um, I certainly took my time. Um, but I also want to thank all of the wonderful faculty that we have uh, at CSUSB in general, but especially in the math department. They've been very supportive and they've been, they've been instrumental in helping me grow to become the uh, person and the mathematician that I am today. Um, so thank you everyone. And I also look forward to seeing what it is I end up accomplishing next. Thank you, Andrew. You certainly sound like you've accomplished so much. Thank you. There's probably gonna be so much applause and congratulations in the chat room for you. I'm seeing it now. At this point, I'd love to have an opportunity to move over to our Department of Biology, uh, specifically the chair of the department, Dr. Michael Chow, uh, who will introduce our um, two honorees, in addition to the faculty who will be speaking a bit on, uh, on behalf, uh, excuse me, we'll be speaking about those students. Uh, Dr. Chow, love to be able to uh, have you here with us today. Thanks, Roberto. Um, our outstanding undergraduate student for the Department of Biology is Marvin Macharia, and he is also the outstanding undergraduate student for the college, and so we're very proud of Marvin. Uh, introducing Marvin will be Dr. David Rhodes, who is his research mentor. David. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Um, hi, everybody, and congratulations to all the student uh, awardees for today. Um, it's my uh, Great pleasure to talk about Marvin. I could go on and on about Marvin, but I'll try to keep it brief. Um, so in my view, Marvin is one of those students that comes along about once a decade or maybe even less frequently than that. Um, he's obviously excellent academically with a GPA of 3.9 here at CNCOSB. Um, but what really set Marvin apart when I had him in the class um, was his thoughtfulness about his academics. So his questions in class weren't so much on the technical issues, but more like, why do you think that pathway exists in cells or something like that? And frequently he would make comments to the class about how amazing this mechanism is or things like that, that clearly indicate a higher level of thinking about the material than most students. Um, in the lab, um, he was a highly dedicated researcher um, and developed into a real leader in the lab. He helped train several other undergraduates in the lab um, and developed a very deep understanding of the purpose of his experiments. His research focused on microbial genomics, specifically identification of genes in agrobacterium that encode enzymes involved in amino acid biosynthesis. This culminated in his competing in the CSUSB undergraduate research competition. Um, from this, he was chosen to represent CSUSB at the system-wide competition at Fullerton. Um, so again, Marvin has and outstanding, was outstanding in his research endeavors. Um, Marvin's service to the university and community has likewise been outstanding. He was vice president of the Pan-African STEM Society um, and was intentionally involved in mentoring other students there. Um, he's involved in the Vines Medical Society, which is an off-campus organization that mentors pre-med students and participated in their summer health academy. He was also elected chair of the Student Health Advisory Committee. Um, in addition to that, Marvin was the representative to ASI for the college and um, did outstanding work in leading that um, effort in terms of uh, student involvement and looking out for the students. Um, but what's really out, so these are all really outstanding academically and research wise and service wise. But what really sets Marvin apart from all of the students I've mentored is the incredible person that he is. He's unmatched in what I call his passion for compassion. Um, from a very early time, it was clear that he had a great desire to help his fellow students. We had numerous conversations about how he'd make up or how he could impact the life of the students. Um, but the one that stands out the most to me and demonstrates the type of person that Marvin is is when he asked me if he could investigate the possibility of starting a hydroponic garden on campus to help fellow students experience, experiencing food insecurity. So these are the thoughts of an especially compassionate student and a truly special and inspirational person in my view. 
And I'm sure that he will go on to accomplish great things professionally, um, for society, for a society that's in need of inspirational leaders. So it's been wonderful to have Marvin around in the lab and in class um, and as a, uh, a wonderful person to talk to. So Marvin. Thank you, Dr. Rhodes. And definitely uh, with Marvin have being have the double the honors, it's time to hear from the to hear from this uh, impressive student. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to start by saying this is a great honor because never in my wildest dreams as a child did I ever think I would, you know, one, be coming to this country and allow or be given the opportunities to do what I've done in my time here at CSSB and to really stand out out of so many intelligent, dedicated students that we have. And that goes to show, one, the type of culture that CSSB has in just cultivating what, when I first came here, were just these simple dreams and simple thoughts into something that became, you know, what it is now. And, you know, I thank all the faculty that I interacted with, all my fellow students and um, that I interacted with that kept on encouraging me. So we have, we've built a great culture here and I'm really grateful for it. Um, but in front of everyone here, I do also want to, to give a take on what we see in the cities around us in the country right now. Um, because I believe everyone here is intelligent and I'll be doing a disservice if I didn't give my input in front of y'all. And that is more and more of us are realizing that we really have the power to change. We're realizing that the fight for uh, equality, the fight against systems of oppression are not just left to the political scientists, they're not just left to the social workers, they're not just left to people who have studied in those fields, but there, it's an obligation to all of us in all our fields, the fields that we do go, we end up. Why were you laughing when you came down? And I'm really, this is a, it's, it's an amazing time to be in. And the fact that as a collective, we're realizing this and we're standing up and I'm grateful for the opportunity and I'm grateful to see what happens next, um, both in, in, in your individual lives and moving forward as the world and as a country. Thank you. Thank you very so much, Marvin. From the bottom of our collective hearts, thank you. We have more inspiring stories. I'm gonna go, Dr. Chow, uh, I'd like to ask if you could please introduce, we have another great uh, outstanding uh, graduate student from the Department of Biology and a faculty member uh, who will be speaking uh, on uh, saying some words for that student. Thanks, Roberto. Um, before I introduce our outstanding graduate student, I did want to say um, one thing about Marvin. And that was that uh, a couple of years ago when Marvin was the guest representative to CNS, um, the one thing, one of the things that stands out the most to me was he came to a chairs meeting. And um, as a sing, uh, just by himself, all by himself um, you know, as sharply dressed as he is today, and he faced a room full of department chairs. He asked us tough questions and he intimidated us. And so um, that was my, one of my um, very, very fond memories of Marvin. Marvin is gonna go on to do great things. Um, the outstanding uh, graduate student for the Department of Biology is Mr. Larry Lopez. And Larry is going to be introduced by his mentor, Nicole Borneus. Nicole. Nicole, I think you're on mute. Sorry. There you go. Okay. All right. So uh, it is a virtual uh, reception. We don't get the cookies and the nice drinks, but my joy for being here and having the opportunity to say a few words uh, why the department and uh, myself in particular uh, recommended Larry for this award is uh, still exists. Um, 
Larry Lopez is the 14th master's student who has been supported by the CERM Scholars Program. And his predecessors have gone on to go to medical school, PhDs, they're doing postdocs, uh, research texts, they're, they're great, great outcomes. Larry started at Cal State in 2012. I had Larry in my Bio 200 class, which is a killer class that does quite a few of our students in, but Larry made it. He got a B plus, which is quite an achievement. And then he also uh, took my genetics class and uh, he also got a B plus there, but that doesn't mean there's not an indication that Larry is a very, was an excellent student. He did very well. Uh, as an undergraduate, and he was motivated enough to come and talk to me about uh, doing a master's program under the CERM uh, support. Uh, and CERM uh, awards, uh, the CERM program uh, awards support for graduate students, for master's students, and they are placed in host labs that do stem cell research. So Larry's choice was to go to Loma Linda University uh, under the support and direction of Dr. Mary Kearns Jonker. And uh, his thesis title, and then I'll translated for the rest of you. Uh, his thesis title was Differentially Expressed MicroRNAs During Neonatal Cardiovascular Progenitor Cell-Mediated Cardiac Repair. What Larry did was to give heart attacks to sheep and then resuscitate their hearts by <laughs> using uh, stem cells and identifying some of the factors that can aid in heart regenerations. And uh, what impressed me every time that Larry talked about his work that he was undertaking, how lucid he was and how he could make it understandable. I had him come and talk to several of my classes and I was always quite impressed by, by the way he um, explained uh, what his work was all about. Uh, his GPA as a master's student is 4.0. Uh, I know that he is ready now to embark on his next step, which I kept telling him that he should be an academic uh, pathway and that he should go on to get a PhD. But uh, Larry is very much committed to applying to medical school and then he will have a chance to go from lambs to humans. So I wish him all the best and I'm really uh, happy and glad to have known him all these years and to have helped him carve this wonderful path in, in his life. And uh, congratulations, Larry. Very well deserved. Thank you, Dr. Boynes. I'll echo that congratulations, Larry. Uh, at this point, let's ask Larry to hold and step up, so to speak, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. This is a tremendous honor. Hi, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, Dr. Borneas, for those kind words. I really appreciate it. Um, one thing I wanted to say is that, uh, you know, coming out of, out of high school, actually, before uh, taking my, my college journey, uh, so to speak, um, you know, I applied at a bunch of different schools, uh, and every single one of them rejected me except Cal State San Bernardino. Uh, it was the only school that, that gave me a shot, and I really appreciated that, and, and I give everything that I have accomplished to Cal State San Bernardino for giving me that opportunity. And uh, I just, I, I took what I, uh, what they gave me, and I did, made the best out of it, you know, the most that I could. And, uh, and I have everything to, to give to the biology department for that because they really, uh, all the faculty members have been supportive of me and, uh, and helped me through my journey. And uh, I want to thank Dr., my, my mentor, Dr. Borneus, um, as well as uh, Dr. Laura Newcomb, who have been uh, two tremendous people in, in that journey for me. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't be here where I am without them, uh, those two specifically. Um, and so, and I would also like to thank my, my family and my friends and, and, and uh, all of their support as well. Um, and, you know, I'm just very, very grateful and uh, we'll see, we'll see uh, what, what is, you know, in store for me in the future. Um, and like Dr. Borneo said, uh, I'm 
planning on hopefully applying to medical medical school soon. Uh, and so uh, that is essentially my next step. But uh, I thank you. Thank everybody. Um, and I appreciate this award. It's, a, it's an honor. I never thought I would uh, be in this position. And I'm very grateful that I am. Thank you, Larry. Very well deserved. Very well deserved. At this point, uh, I'd like to go ahead and ask, turn over to uh, Dr. Kimberly Cousins, the chair of our Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, uh, to provide an opportunity for her to announce uh, our student honoree. Dr. Cousins. Thank you, Roberto, and everybody for being here. Um, I'm really pleased to introduce our outstanding undergraduate for the year, uh, Hannah Fezcik. I had the pleasure of meeting her as a first quarter freshman in organic chemistry, which is very rare. Um, usually people start at an earlier class than that. And uh, she has set the world on fire since she's been on our campus ever since. Uh, she was in Dr. Malari's lab as a freshman and he quickly scooped her up for his research group. He wanted to be here today, but wasn't able to for personal reasons, but he passed off his comments to me. So I will continue with that. Uh, during her time here, uh, Hannah has had numerous accolades, including being a ac uh, Presidential Academic Excellence Scholar, Stanford Sh Shaw Memorial Scholar, a Hires Meyer Scholar, and in our department, our highest award is the Ralph Petrucci Scholarship. She's earned that as well. During she, uh, starting in her freshman year, she did work in Dr. Malari's lab, working on chemical inhibitors for malarial protease which um, is working on treatment for under, uh, underserved diseases. And um, she presented, I think, something like 12 times off campus, and she's first author of a paper out of that work, uh, which has been published. She's also um, gone to two external REUs, one at Georgetown University and one at U New York University. In the last couple of years, her interests have wandered in the direction of physics as well, and she will graduate with a double major in chemistry and physics with a 3.9 GPA. Hannah also has been recently awarded a prestigious NSF Graduate Research Fellowship, which those of you who know about it is a very um, selective program, and that will help fund her PhD work at the University of Chicago where she will be working towards a PhD in molecular engineering. Uh, I also have been privileged to have Hannah serve as a, an SI instructor and an assistant in my classroom for several different classes, and she's a wonderful educator as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Cousins. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, this will be a great opportunity uh, to have Hannah speak with us, share a few words. I'll go ahead and flash her. Uh... Wow, thank you guys so much. Um, I'd just like to thank Cal State San Bernardino because they have from the beginning supported me in like becoming this accomplished. My first experience at Cal State was meeting Dr. Stanley and he was the one that encouraged me to take OCHEM my first quarter with Dr. Cousins. And then I was lucky enough to meet Dr. Malari also my first quarter and he took the risk of accepting me as his um, research student. Um, I'm also really grateful for Dr. Hood. She was my Calbridge mentor and she guided me so much through the graduate school application process and applying for the NSF GRFP and surviving my last two years of upper division physics classes with chemistry, upper division chemistry classes. Thank you very much, Hannah. Appreciate this. For our next group of students, we're going to move on over to the School of Computer Science and Engineering, and uh, specifically the uh, uh, director of uh, uh, CSC, Dr. Haiyan Chow, and uh, asked her if she'd be able to uh, introduce not only our outstanding undergraduate and graduate speakers. Sure. It's my great pleasure and honor to introduce our outstanding undergraduate student, Sherry Butcher. Sherry, are you here? Okay. Yes, uh, I'm here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Uh, Shari graduated from CSE with a near perfect GPA 3.979. Uh, he also worked as an excellent and diligent ISA for a number of CSE courses, which is not common for undergraduate students. Uh, not only being exceptional in academic, she also demonstrated amazing leadership skills. She has been a officer in the Women in Computer Engineering, in the Women in Computer Science and Engineering Club. And during the time being the officer, the club officer, she has taken great leadership on a number of projects, including peer support, study sessions, uh, actual curriculum projects, and uh, faculty research uh, seminar, also the engineering future conference by uh, engaging both students, faculty, and uh, industry professionals. So I'm very proud of Sherry, congratulations. Thank also, you very much, Dr. Chow. My colleagues, Dr. Ho, Dr. Mohadet, and uh, Dr. Conception are joining to congratulate Sherry again. So, yeah. Thank you, Doctor. I appreciate it. Uh, colleagues, I wonder if any. Uh. Yes, yeah. Hello, this is uh, Fabi Mohedat. Hello, Hello, Sherry. Congra <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, I just want to say something. I mean, I had Sherry when I joined uh, last September 2019. It was my first class I teach uh, algorithm analysis, CSE 431, one of the well known difficult by nature course. So uh, she did great. She's the only one who asked my final exam, the only person <laughs> who did the final exam, and that's achievement by itself. So, congratulations. Uh, I was so happy to have her. She was always educated uh, in my team based learning teaching style. She was the star. She always like, you know, uh, teaching and, and being like offering her help and assistance for uh, her peers. And I was really, really happy and uh, uh, pleasure and honor to have you in my class. I believe you are a star and you will be a star whenever you go. So I'm looking forward yeah. to hear more about you in the future. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much, Professor. It was a fun class. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, did you maybe perhaps want to take just a moment? Uh, I don't want to cut anyone off from the from uh, the school of CSC, but Sherry, if you wanted to uh, just say a quick word or two, uh, love to hear from you. I'm sure you have a lot of fans in the audience today. Yeah, well, I'd like, uh, there's quite a few professors I'd like to thank that aren't here. Like the professor that I've been ISA for, I was on ISA for Kristen Voigt, who's involved in artificial intelligence and things like that. And we had a lot of interesting conversations. Taylene Giorgio, who's a lecturer. I've been her TA for over a year now. And then of course, all the excellent professors I've had, Professor Mahida, Dr. Chow herself, um, just all the professors that I had that taught such interesting classes and kept me, kept me going and motivated even when, you know, the road got tough or, um, you know, with the coronavirus shutting down and everything too, having good professors and Professors like Professor Mahida, who are encouraging, really, really helps. And um, yeah, I can't believe that <laughs> five years ago, I thought I would never go to college. So I don't know, I just like to thank everyone that I've met that's encouraged me along the way. Dr. Thank Johnson you. too, in the math department too. I mean, I've had professors across the board. It doesn't even matter what subject, pro excellent professors at Cal State who are, I think, good for their students. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Every single one of us is proud of you, to, uh, proud of you as we are of many of our honorees. Uh, Dr. Chow, I, I don't know if our, uh, our other honoree for the School of Computer Science and Engineering, if they're present. If they are, I'd be, I'm happy to hear from them, but I would I think it'd be great to uh, uh, announce them uh, to everyone that we have gathered here, if that'd be okay with you. Sure. Uh, Sherry, congratulations. I know you are going to the industry, uh, but whenever you want to consider the graduate program, um, we welcome you join CSU, CSE at CSUSB. Uh, 
Um, okay, uh, it's my honor to uh, introduce our outstanding graduate student, Chaz Hampton. Chaz graduated from CSE for his undergraduate degree, and then he continued uh, in CSE to pursue master program. Uh, it's amazing, he completed the program in one year. And uh, he has been extremely, uh, in each class he's taking to help tutor students and support other uh, students in the lab. Um, so I'm very proud of him. And uh, Dr. Conception, my colleague, is also here to join me to congratulate Chess. So uh, maybe Dr. Conception could say more about Chess. Wonderful. We'd like to hear more, th more things, of course. He needs to unmute himself. Art, we cannot hear you. You have to unmute. Roberto, can you unmute? He did. There you go. Hello? There you go. Okay. You can see me now? We can hear you now. Oh, you can hear me. But you cannot see me? We can see you, Dr. Concepcion. OK, great. Uh, I just would like to say a few words about Chas. Uh, I first met Chas in my software engineering class in uh, uh, the spring of 2018. And my software engineering class is a unique class because it is project-based. There are no finals, no midterms, no quiz. Uh, the, the students undergo uh, software engineering projects and they finish it like in a software company. In a, uh, Chas work on a project called SOS. It is a uh, mobile app for uh, alerting emergency in, uh, uh, in a high school. And uh, it was uh, uh, introduced to some high school to, um, uh, uh, to, to be the uh, kind of a uh, uh, emergency situation alert for the students. And, uh, and then uh, in the summer, uh, he, um, uh, he joined my group called the Mobile App uh, Development Team. These are former students in my software engineering class who like to continue uh, projects uh, in the uh, software engineering. And he was involved in the Bubble In. Uh, Bubble In um, Mobile App is a uh, alternative to Scantron. Uh, I don't know if you, you guys know about that. Scantron is the common way of taking tests in multiple choice exam. And if not for this pandemic uh, lockdown, uh, we had uh, for spring, we would have pilot tested it in our campus as an alternative to uh, taking exam in this Cantron uh, uh, card. And then in the, in the spring of, uh, uh, in the fall of 2019, as uh, Dr. Chow said, uh, he started his master's program and uh, he uh, uh, fully developed the Bubble In uh, app into a uh, um, what we call a service-oriented uh, software engineering paradigm. So it is fully uh, implemented in the cloud and all resources are in the cloud. And uh, 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 after graduation, uh, he said, uh, uh, Dr. Charles had a year um, that he took to finish the uh, the master's program, he will be serving the US Air Force cyber operation as a second lieutenant. Uh, he has been commissioned as second lieutenant. So Chas, my salute. Thank you so much, Dr. Concepcion. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Dr. David Maynard as we'd like to uh, cover our Department of Geological Sciences. We have two great students. Uh, just a quick reminder, I know we have so much we wanna share about our students, I, we could go on and on and on. Uh, but just to make sure we can cover everybody, uh, we'll again just remind everyone to uh, we'll keep our comments as effusive as we all want to be uh, as brief and to the point, and that leaves more time for our students, which I think is very important. Uh, Dr. Maynard, if you can introduce the uh, the honorees sure. and then to our, our speakers. So from, the from the Department of Geological Sciences, the outstanding undergraduate is Tracy Roberts, who will be introduced by Dr. Merrick, Eric Milkery. Thank you, Dave. Um, and thank you, Tracy, for your hard work this past year. 
Um, whenever you get a cohort of undergraduates, you hope that there'll be a student like Tracy in there, uh, someone who the other students look up to, who really make the whole journey for everyone a lot more pleasant. And so it was quite an honor when she came to me looking to uh, do an environmentally themed senior project. Uh, in keeping with her modest goals, she uh, settled on tackling the Salton Sea, which is quite an environmental disaster waiting to happen. And to do this is an interdisciplinary project. And so uh, we managed to recruit a tame biologist, uh, Dr. Becky Tallon, to uh, help us with this. And the, the basic premise of her project was uh, about a year ago, we went out to the Salton Sea and we looked at the toxicity of the sediments out there, which uh, every year there's more and more of it being exposed as the lake evaporates. Since this is ultimately a sink for a lot of agricultural chemicals and potentially toxic heavy metals, anybody who's breathing the air after a dust storm is gonna be potentially ingesting this. So we looked at the chemistry of these materials, um, which was really quite exciting to, to see her making these discoveries. But then uh, she also worked with Dr. Talon to do some biological assays. And maybe Dr. Talon can say briefly what uh, was involved there. So we used Drosophila, the fruit fly, um, and she looked at whether exposure to the sediments increased the mortality of the flies. And with using a, a simple approach of a biological assay, um, it was able to, we were able to take a look at these sediments. Now, this is the type of project that it's wonderful to see a student tackle because we have no idea what's going to come out of it. And the result was actually uh, a bit surprising. It turned out that um, the dust itself was not affecting the fruit fly mortality in a statistically significant way. Uh, and we were a little bit surprised by this uh, because it's known that there's health effects, but it seems that instead what we need to be focusing on is the actual ingestion of the particles into the lungs. And as uh, it's useful to, to tell students that, you know, not only is it important to find some big problem, but it's also to find out what's not a big problem and where we can uh, focus our efforts for in the future. So Tracy took these lessons to heart and it was a, a wonderful example of what a dedicated undergraduate can do uh, when they set their mind to it. And it's all the more impressive because it was an interdisciplinary project. So uh, in memory of that hot sweltering day when uh, both of our families, Tracy, went out there to uh, trudge among the uh, bones of all of the uh, uh, tilapia and the other fish out there on the lake shore, and the barnacles and everything else. Uh, it's come all the way full circle here and you're getting the recognition you deserve for your hard work. So congratulations to you. Congratulations, Tracy. Thank you to both of you. Tracy, you're on the hot seat. Would you have a few moments to share a couple of words? Sure, um, thank you so much. Uh, this is such an unexpected honor and um, I'm, I'm truly grateful for the recognition um, and I really appreciate it. Uh, this journey is a long one for me. I um, am an older returning student, and so this is 20 years in the making. So I'm totally and um, super appreciative and grateful to all the faculty in the geologic department. Um, I did wanna say special thanks to Dr. Talon and Dr. Melchior for taking me under their wing and guiding me and leading me throughout the whole process of my senior project. Um, and especially to just be able to um, easily approach any of the faculty in, in the geology department is so important. And, um, and it just made this, what could have been scary journey, um, just a lot smoother. Uh, I did also wanna say a special thank you to Dr. Frixell for taking me under her wing as a learning assistant and giving me an opportunity to um, to act as a teaching assistant and continuing to grow and learn, but also to mentor other students. Um, hopefully one day I'll be able to pursue uh, education. And so it really just um, helped me embrace those passions. Uh, additionally, I wanted to say thank you to Dr. Cato 
Dr. Lazar and Dr. Latham, um, this bunch of professors that I've worked with, they are so brilliant. And I just, I am truly blessed to have been able to, um, to learn and grow from them. So thank you. Thank you, Tracy, and congratulations. We'll turn this over actually back to Dr. Melchior uh, in order for uh, a time for us to announce uh, the, uh, the uh, next honoree from the Department of Geological Sciences. Yes, um, so uh, Katie is another one of these students who is, is just fantastic to have in the department. It, it makes it a much more rich place. And as one of our undergraduates, um, it was again flattering to have her continue on with the master's degree uh, and selecting to work with me. Now, the projects she picked is, is almost out of a, a, a fairy tale or storybook. Now, sometimes I go to the students and I can see in their eyes, they don't quite believe what I'm telling them. And when I told my geochemistry class uh, last year that uh, there was a potential project to work on shipwreck treasure, uh, they seemed skeptical. But Katie and uh, another student who's also now a graduate student, Brian Seymour, um, decided to accompany me to the uh, place where they were curating all of the treasure from a shipwreck that happened right after the gold rush. It was full of gold rush uh, miners coming back uh, in 1857, loaded down with gold, and their ship sank in a hurricane off the Carolinas. And it was discovered. And uh, we've been fortunate enough to work with the individuals who found this. So Katie's mod modest project was actually to take a look at something that people have written books about. So that should be intimidating enough to begin with. But when piles of treasure like this are found on the bottom of the ocean, who can resist the chance? Not Katie, because Katie and her partner are also amateur gold prospectors with metal detectors and dry washers. So this was a natural for her to look at. So she was one of those rare individuals who's able to take something that they're passionate about as a hobby and do it as a living. By the way, that's called a professor, Katie, and you should consider that for your PhD. So um, we were very happy to have her work on this project. And for her project, she's been able to look at the gold that was recovered from the ship's safe. Inside of it was a vest. They didn't have money belts in those days. And sewn inside of it were little parcels of gold. And so the question was, who owned this and where did it come from? And so her diligent work involving uh, experimental work at um, uh, University of Arizona in Tucson, uh, she was able to identify unique trace elements and minerals in this gold that narrowed down which rivers this gold came from. So from a shipwreck in 1857, she's been able to identify the path of a 49er, the journey that they took through the California mother load, which is quite an impressive feat for a master's degree. So Katie has all the right material to continue on with her graduate work at a PhD institution, and I'm looking forward to one day being able to congratulate uh, Dr. Katie. So I'll turn it over at this point. Thank you, Dr. Melchior. Uh, Katie, uh, you're in the hot seat. So many wonderful things say about you. Can you share a few of your thoughts for a moment? Uh, yeah, definitely. So um, man, I don't even like know where to start. Like so many people are responsible for helping me get here today. Um, uh, and just the, the being able to work with gold and something that I like have a passion for already. Uh, I, I like, I'm living the dream guys. <laughs> um, I really want to thank everybody in the geology department, um, for making every day just memorable. Um, I come to the department, not just for the love of knowledge that I have, but also for the people and, uh, I really just like can't thank everybody enough and I'm always going to treasure my time here at CSUSB and uh, I am genuinely thinking of actively pursuing a PhD but uh, we'll see we'll see where this this next step takes me. <laughs> thank you guys. 
Thank you so much, Katie. We're very, very proud of you. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our Department of Human Health and Human Ecology, uh, where we have uh, two student honorees. I'm very excited to be able to have uh, Dr. Joe Hughes uh, joining us, who will announce the uh, undergraduate honoree, Dr. Hughes. Thank you. It's very much a pleasure to be here today, and it's very much a pleasure to be able to introduce Alejandro Guajardo, our outstanding undergraduate student. And I have had her in my classes for a couple years. And like all of the students here today, academic excellence is something which she is outstanding at. And in particular, what impresses me about her is her attention to detail. She has greater attention to detail than any student I think I've ever had. And it's a little bit scarier because I think her attention to detail is a little bit better than my attention to detail, which in can, can scare you a little bit at times. The other thing is she's very proactive. Um, I quite often give students lots of problems to solve. And whenever there's a difficult problem, I can always guarantee she'll be in during office hours to go over the problem and make sure she understands it. One of the things we try to teach our students is to have a balance and variety in their life. And in addition to academic excellence, Ms. Guajardo has also done a good job in terms of balance and variety. Besides being here and being a very hardworking student, she also works at Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, where she has a job as a dietary aide. And if that weren't enough, she's also excellent in terms of service. And the number one organization for nutritionists in California is the California, California Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And she volunteers with them and is actually the person responsible for their Instagram page. She maintains their Instagram page for them. And one of the things she also did for them is she created a thing called Feature Friday, in which every Friday they recognize an outstanding dietitian in the state of California. So on that note, why don't I go ahead and turn it over to, back, back to you, Roberto, I guess. Thank you, Dr. Hughes. Uh, I actually want to take a moment and hear from uh, Alondra if she's with, uh, here today. Yes, thank you so much for hosting this wonderful event. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Yes, we can hear you quite well. Okay, thank you. Um, so I first want to thank the Nutrition and Food Sciences faculty, particularly Dr. Chen, Dr. Hughes, and Dr. Malik, um, for just giving me the opportunities that I really never believed I would be taking part in and have enjoyed tremendously. I want to thank everyone for the opportunity to represent my major as well. I want to thank my family, my friends, and my partner for always being there for me and um, believing in me every step of the way. And at last, I want to congratulate all of our awardees. You all deserve it. Thank you so much, Alondra. It's very, it's very modest of you. Thank you. Uh, we're still, we've got another uh, honoree in the, in the uh, Department of uh, uh, Human Health and, and uh, Health Science and Human Ecology, excuse me. And for this, I'd like to actually reach out to Dr. Ted Coleman out there uh, to announce our outstanding uh, graduate student. Good afternoon, everybody. It's sure nice to be with you, and it's nice to hear some of the wonderful things about our students in other departments outside of ours. Even in the college, it sometimes feels like we're in silos. And so it's awfully nice uh, to be part of this uh, celebration for our students. Our outstanding graduate student is Angela Ayers Hudson. Uh, I've known Angela for about three and a half years, and uh, she initially show, showed up one day in my uh, pathophysiology class. That's kind of a tough course for a lot of students, and yet she was one of those outstanding students who just kept right with us and stayed right on top of everything. Uh, we got to uh, several opportunities to discuss her work and uh, her interests uh, as she went through that class. She later on uh, also was a student in my human sexuality class. And uh, again, another uh, very specific type of uh, uh, focus within the health sciences. But Angela was good at all those different things and she was interested in all those different things. Uh, as we got better acquainted, realized that she's the, the mother of four children. And in fact, one of her children, her daughter is going to graduate from Cal State with her this month. And uh, that's pretty exciting. So, um, so Angela uh, was one of those who was a little bit conflicted about what to do next after she finished her undergraduate degree, decided 
uh, for several reasons that she would go ahead and pursue the Master of Public Health in uh, our department in health science and human ecology. So she applied, of course, and was accepted. She also applied to become a graduate teaching assistant. We have a, a, a Health Science 120, which is one of the general education courses, uh, big class with lots of different labs. And so Angela applied to teach one of our labs. Turns out she taught 13 of those labs over the last two years. And she was so good at what she did, she was also invited to be part of the team to rewrite the lab manual as we're making the transition to semesters. So just one more thing that she's done. She's had so many different opportunities to, uh, to practice what she's doing in the classroom. And I think one of her skills is the practical application of the conceptual things that we try to teach our students, the balance and the perspectives from so many different aspects of health science and human ecology. So very proud of Angela. And uh, it's my honor to introduce her. It's been a, a pleasure and an honor to be associated with such a fine and outstanding student. Thank you, Dr. Coleman. Definitely, we'd love to take this time and have uh, hear from Angela. We have so many beautiful things that we've heard about you. Okay. Hi, how is everyone? Um, I just want to congratulate everyone. And Dr. Coleman, I love you. You're who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> You're one of my favorite people. Um, thank you to Dr. Michigani. Um, I don't even know what to say. Like, we're living in a time where public health is on the forefront of everything. So I'm really glad I pursued this major and I'm able to educate um, and promote health. Um, it's just a huge honor. I won't hold you guys up. I just appreciate everyone. I love our department. Um, Dr. Coleman, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Dr. Michigani, thank you for everything you do. Um, and I appreciate everyone. Have a good day, you guys. Thank you so much, Angela. We're very proud of you. Thank you so much. At this time, I, I, know, I know we're going a little bit past four, but we have three more departments and, and they just keep getting better, everybody. Uh, from our uh, Department of Kinesiology, I do want to take a moment to make sure that I re recognize the chair of the Department of Kinesiology, Dr. Brian Haddock. And uh, I know, uh, Dr. Haddock, if you could uh, give us a, a hello to everyone here and then perhaps. Uh, uh, introduce the our fa our uh, not only of the outstanding undergraduate but the faculty speaker uh, who we have here to say a few words about the honoree. Sure, thanks, Roberto. Um, so it's my pleasure to announce the undergraduate major of the year for the Department of Kinesiology, uh, Laura Contreras um, Ballesteros, and I've got uh, Dr. Chris Gentry here to um, give a few um, specific words. Well, first, everybody, I just want to say congratulations to uh, all the students. And, um, you know, uh, every time we get into these, I'm always impressed about how many things are going on in the students' lives, work, everything else. And, and you know, they're doing all of this and at the same time trying to get um, their degree. So uh, congratulations to you all. Laura is no different in that uh, as she works, as she goes through all of this. Uh, in kinesiology, we have three tracks. We have allied health, we have exercise science, and we have uh, physical education, adapted physical education. And uh, as a former teacher, uh, I'm so happy that Laura picked uh, physical education as, as what she wanted to do. Um, she will be an excellent teacher. And um, the, it's been my pleasure to know her through classes and then also through her working with uh, Myself, Dr. So, Dr. Rimo, and, and different research projects, I've, I've learned that she's just a wonderful person as well. Uh, to try to not take up too much time, just to, to mention a few things that Laura's accomplished during her time. Uh, for us, obviously, the CNS undergrad nominee, but uh, she was also selected by our department as one of three students to be honored as the uh, Society of Health and Physical Educator, Educators of America Major of the Year, uh, where departments get to nominate their students. She was selected for PE for us. She's also the American Kinesiology Association uh, Undergraduate of the Year nominee for our department, and that's just one student chosen. Uh, she has started off with uh, presenting with me on a, or she did it by herself in a poster at the uh, Western Society for Kinesiology and Wellness in 2019, a research critique. Uh, just to see what she thought about working on research. She liked it and uh, she got first place there for her research critique. So she went on and and has done some original research work with myself and Dr. Rimel. 
and Dr. So helped with that. Um, and she, at the last CAPERD conference, uh, when she presented perceptions of observational learning among athletes with disabilities, she received first place for that as well. And she's also presented at the meeting of the minds. Uh, there's much more I could say, but um, I just want to tell her congratulations. And uh, final thought is that uh, she has been accepted in the credential program and master's program at Cal Poly Pomona with the SEED scholarship, which is a full scholarship. So congratulations, Laura. Thank you, Dr. Gentry. And uh, uh, perhaps uh, Dr. So wanted to take, take a moment before we move on to Laura. Uh, thank you. This is my, um, the pleasure and honor to be here with you, uh, with a high achieving graduate and undergraduate students in CNS. Uh, again, congratulations. And I can add uh, a lot of things to Laura, but uh, I just want to say thank you for your hard work and uh, wonderful achievements uh, for the past few years. And good luck with your future. And uh, you're not going to go far away from us. You'll be studying uh, your credential and master's program in uh, at Cal Poly Pomona. And good luck. And uh, we, wish, uh, we wish you uh, all the best. And uh, Congratulations again, uh, and congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. So, Dr. Gentry, and Dr. Haddock. I appreciate it. I'm so excited. We have so many great students. Uh, at this point, we're going to uh, ask Laura if she would like to say a couple of things to a group here that is nothing but proud of her. Laura? Uh, hello. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, honestly, from the bottom of my heart. Um, I remember Dr. Gentry when he approached me to do the uh, research critique at WSKW. I was so nervous, but I'm so glad I did take that step because research is all that I really think about now, and I can't wait to expand on our, um, you know, kinesiology and teaching. And I really would not be where I am today, where with all of my professors, Dr. So, Dr. Rimel, uh, Dr. Dabbs. I, I wish I could hug them all or walk through that hallway where all their doors are open and they just take me in with open arms. Um, I just want to say I'm thankful and I just appreciate you all. Thank you so much, Laura. It's very kind to, to hear that expressed to, the, to your faculty. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, folks, we have two more departments. I'm going to go and transition over to our Department of Nursing. Uh, first, I want to make sure that I do recognize uh, Dr. Terry Birch, the chair of the department who is here joining us today. So definitely make sure uh, it's a great pleasure that we have. Uh, in addition to that, though, I would like to go ahead and turn. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Young Lee Kim, who will be uh, announcing our under, un, under, outstanding undergraduate student in the Department of Nursing. So I'll go ahead and uh, turn over uh, the mic, as they say. Dr. Kim? Yes, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, okay. loud and clear. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is a, a huge pleasure to introduce Vivian uh, Arriaga today. She's a Palm Desert Campus nursing student of an undergraduate program. She's an amazing student to demonstrate excellent academic achievement of a nursing program. Her GPA, GPA is a uh, 3.99, wow. She's a diligent and a real life, uh, real life person. And she always respect the classmate and faculty members and others in clinical side. So she did also a wonderful job on clinical practice to take care of a patient in various background with the positive outcomes from there. And also she uh, collaborated work with the nurses and uh, staff members from the clinical site. Not only she did a good job on academy achievement, she's also actively participating in many uh, community uh, healthcare event and education program to support Coachella Valley residents' health as a volunteer and the Coyote Nursing student members. I really uh, proud of uh, the, uh, Vivian, and then Vivian, she did an excellent job. Vivian, uh, congratulations, and then I'm really proud of you. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Uh, Vivian, we're going to we put everyone on the spot. Vivian, we'd love to have uh, hear from you for a moment uh, regarding this honor. Thank you. I figured I would be. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Dr. Kim. Of course, thank you, Dr. Birch, Dr. Brandt. Um, 
The faculty, I have to say, is amazing. Uh, the difficulty of the program is actually warranted and it's something that I thank them for because obviously I have to be able to go into a patient's room and know what to do at this point to save this person's life. I already knew that nursing was important, but obviously with this whole COVID thing, uh, it's actually an honor now to hopefully in a month or so, once I take my boards, be able to call myself a registered nurse. I am a licensed vocational nurse already, but since I started, I knew that I, I had to keep going and I had to pursue my dream. And in order to do that, the only way that I was able to do it was with the support of my family, my mother, my father, my husband, my sister, and my two children, who you probably see running around right here. Um, it has been tough, I'm not gonna lie, especially being a mother, but I am thankful for the opportunity. I'm thankful for the support that I received from the faculty, and it is truly an honor to receive this award. Thank you. Congratulations, Vivian. I'm glad you were here to, jo uh, to be with us and to, to share your, your experiences with us. Thank you so much. All right, I'll move on over to, uh, for, I will reach out with great uh, uh, consideration to Dr. Margaret Beeman, who I will ask to please introduce the outstanding graduate uh, for the Department of Nursing. And I, I, uh, uh, not to steal the thunder, but I will uh, uh, remind Dr. Uh, Beeman that uh, this individual, there are actually two, uh, uh, two awards uh, that they are receiving. So I will turn this over to Dr. Beeman. Okay, thank you very much. I'm so glad to be here. It's always been a pleasure. I miss, I do miss the cookies, but I did like the little cookie images we received earlier. You know, I first met Sandra Cardenas when she was a nurse at Eisenhower and I was doing some work with them. Her passion for research, her passion for patient care was clearly evident. And when she was talking to me, I encouraged her to go on to school. I mean, absolutely. And she chose us. And we have three specialties, which is advanced community public health, population health, and nurse educator. And uh, the longest clinical is advanced community public health nursing. And that is what she selected to do. And at that time, I was unaware that she was a very active participant at the Coachella Valley Volunteers in Medicine Clinic. She volunteered there. She took care of patients. She also interpreted for the Spanish speakers, and it was a nice transition for her. Now her work at the hospital, she was looking at a study about no one should pass a door if they see something in a patient's room. And she was the, one of the leaders of the team of nurses that were doing something in the new residency program. So then when we, she came to us, we talked to her about what she could continue doing in the Department of Nursing. She had um, already had a relationship with CBVIM, so she decided to continue doing that. And she has the goal of being a nurse educator, so she will be doing that as well. And she really wanted to, has a passion for the underserved. And her home community is in Coachella Valley, so she wanted to continue working with Hispanic patients. And she discovered in her assessment that they really have a problem with hypertension, which causes a lot of difficulty later with their health problems. So she uh, also revealed to me that she had went in her school in Iowa, and I think her faculty member is online, and was the one who inspired her to go on to school, and that's exciting. And she did some research there and was in their senior honors research program. So during her time here, she started out with uh, working with CBVIM and they did not have a hypertensive clinic. And it's a preventive thing to, talk, to screen people for hypertension, to get them the right resources that they need, and also try to offer a program for them. During her time, she launched a, a health fair, one of their first ones they had at this clinic. We didn't have a lot of attendance, but it was well represented with people from the various departments at Cal State, and also from the Heart Association and from Eisenhower. And she's moving on to try to get this uh, to be a regular part of the CVVIM program. In the midst of all this, she moved to New Mexico. And I wanna thank Cheryl Branch for approaching me. What do you think? Do you think she can still do this? She took trains, she didn't take any boats, of course, 
She took flights. She was here on time. She came and spent weeks at a time there helping the clinic. And she's really done a lot. Her grade point average is 3.906. I've encouraged her to go on to school. And I think she'll continue working with her population. She's absolutely excellent. So I introduce Sandra Cardenas to you. Thank you, Dr. Beeman. Sandra, we'd love to hear from you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me and giving me the honor for this. Um, I really came into this program, um, especially Nursing 2, to really help my Hispanic community. They're the ones who actually made me who I am today. And, in, and I feel like it's my right to be in this country to be able to help them move forward as, long as, as much as they helped me. Um, I want to thank my family, my professors, especially Professor Cuny, who's actually on here tonight, um, Dr. Beeman, Brandt, Dr. Kim, because they all helped me be able to realize some of my dreams. Um, I don't feel like I did it much, so I'm hoping to continue schooling and continue helping my community in Coachella, as it is a very underserved population, and they really deserve all this health care that they need. Um, so I want to thank everyone for giving me this opportunity. I really hope to continue helping my community in Coachella. Um, keep look at them. It's Eastern Coachella Valley. It's very underserved. And if there's anything that you think in your um, department can help, they'll be very, very helpful. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Sandra. Uh, you're making us proud. Um, and now we have move on to our Department of Physics. I want to make sure that I am uh, that I'm not remiss. We have the chair for the Department of Physics, Dr. Javier Torner, who's here. Hello, everyone. Hi, Dr. Torner. And then I understand uh, we have Dr. Paul Dixon, who uh, has the great honor to be able to announce uh, our outstanding uh, undergraduate student uh, for the Department of Physics. So, Dr. Dixon, I love excited to hear from you. Okay. Well, let's do it. So. Um, Physics is always last. I've done this a few times. It's always interesting being the last speaker, especially with so many professors that don't have a bound on their speaking time. That's a bit of a challenge. Um, but anyway, um, uh, I know we're, we've gone kind of long and, and I don't want to keep anybody uh, much longer, but I do want to celebrate Mandy. Mandy's not here right now. She's not with us, but she's got the ultimate best reason. She got married this weekend. She's up in Washington settling in. Uh, her husband is uh, going to be working up there and she's going to be attending the University of Washington uh, in the PhD program in physics full ride, as you might expect. She's an outstanding student. She really had her choice, and she chose the University of Washington uh, in part to be with her husband. Um, so Mandy's uh, doing extremely well. And in addition to being a physics uh, um, student, she was also a, a computer science and engineering student. So she actually has a technically a triple degree, uh, computer science, computer, uh, computer engineering, and physics. And she's just a remarkable person. And it's, it's a shame she's not here, because I'd really like to tell her how much, how much I really think of her, how wonderful I think she is. And um, if she's seeing the recording, I wish her the best. So everybody, um, let's, let's say uh, congratulations to Mandy on a job well done. Thank you, Dr. Dixon. I, I echo that, I second that. I'm sure Dr. Turner as well. Uh, Mandy, I know out into the cyberspace, thank you so much for everything you've done. You're making us proud. And at this point, if uh, uh, I wanna say congratulations to everyone and thank everyone. I wanna check in to see if uh, uh, Dean, uh, Dr. Sassi Pantula, the Dean of the College of Natural Sciences, uh, might want to have a few closing remarks if he's available. I do know he has a number of events here. Dean Pantula, are you around? Yes, I am around. I'm in uh, two Zooms at the same time, but uh, we, we have chemistry graduation ceremony or parties going on um, with Kim Cousins. So some of the people have shifted there. Um, but I'm so proud. I, it was so touching to hear our students and how much work that they're doing and how much they appreciate the hard work of our faculty mentoring them. It goes both ways. Uh, we learn from each other. And I, I really appreciate uh, also the message from Marvin and others. We all have work to do. Uh, we all have work to do in terms of our society and changing things. Uh, it, it should not be just stopped with the words. We got to do some action, follow up, et cetera. And we have a lot of people in the health profession who are in the front uh, lines right now. Uh, I've been thinking about all of you uh, who are working very hard to do the clinicals, et cetera. Thank you again. Um, I know our future is brighter looking at all of you. Uh, I wish you the very best and 
keep in touch. We never say goodbye. It's always until later. So we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Rantoul. I appreciate it. Thank you. You have provided such a great opportunity for everyone. Take care, everyone. To the students, congratulations. And as, Dr. as Dean Pantula said, and we'll see you again. Thank you, Roberto, and everybody who organized it. Thank you, and thank you, Yolanda. You are a huge help the past couple of weeks. Roberto, did you see Dr. Uh, Fix Jones uh, comment to do reverse order next time? Gotcha, gotcha. I, I, did, <laughs> but, uh, I think I got that last year too. I think nursing had to go first, but. Oh yeah, they did, huh? Yep. It depends on what's going on. Hi, All Dr. Seaman. Right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.